Right, fellas, bring it in, bring it in. Okay, so we've got our last training day here in Cyprus before this game against Omanoia. We're not expected to do anything in this game, so no pressure. But what I do want to talk about is that it's forecast to be 35 degrees here tomorrow. I know that's about 40 degrees warmer than it usually is at home. So what I need you to do before every training session and before the game tomorrow, just lather yourselves up in this. I do not want the girlfriends coming to me and complain that you guys look like burnt tomatoes, okay? So just make sure you slip, slop, and wrap before we get into these training sessions, okay? I do not want any hassle for this big game, okay, fellas? Let's go. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 25 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and today we are in the second qualifying round for the Conference League. We are heading to Cyprus to take on Omanoia over two legs. So if you're looking forward to this one then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is. Greatly appreciated, but we have played absolutely zero games since yesterday's episode. The boys come into this straight off a week-long break since that win over Bohemian. If you missed that, I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner. I probably said yesterday's amongst that. It was a few days ago now. Sorry we didn't get a video out yesterday, but had a few meetings and whatnot that have been taking place about the house that I'm getting built and other things. So we'll try and make up for that over this upcoming weekend. But today, straight off the back of that, we are taking on Omanoia, but before we do get into that, we have made a few more transfers. A few more players that we did have here on trial have been signed. These players probably going to end up making up the league team that we put out while this team that has been playing for most of the season continues to play in the conference league for as long as we are in it. It could end up not being an issue at all if we get knocked out in today's episode, but we have brought a few more players in on free transfers, no outgoings, but we've signed seven more players since yesterday's episode. We'll quickly have a look at them as they're not going to be playing too many on-camera games until next season. I imagine the first is a new first-choice goalkeeper for the league team. This is Mikel Serafalino, 24-year-old Italian. Quite a decent upgrade on Bardu, as you can see there, just based on the star ratings. I compared the stats as well. He is a good upgrade, 1.92 meters tall, very good jumping reach, decent aerial reach. Looks like a decent goalkeeper who we can bring into the team, especially as Poles is going to be leaving us at the end of this season as well. He joins us having had a good spell at Fiorentina recently. Next up, we have a new centre-back to add to the mix. This is Xavier Mbiamba. He is 21 years old. He is from Congo, but he is part European as he is also part Dutch. So that's why we've signed him as he does fit in with our transfer policy and the league policy of only having so many players who are non-EU. Very good aerial threat. That's why we've signed this guy, despite having free star ability. His good potential, 15 heading, 16 jumping reach, 1.94 meters tall. Looks like a very good option for what I want for my centre-backs. Does Mbiamba, who comes to us having previously spent some time at both Barcelona and Chelsea. Next up, a Frenchman who joins the squad. He could be an option for us on the wing or up front. That is Eddie Otala, the 21-year-old with one under 21 French cap and goal. A little bit of an improvement on what we had in terms of our upfront options already at the club. And he joins us, having recently spent some time at Lille. Then we started to add a little bit of depth in midfield. That's probably one of the weakest areas outside of Zvodersky in this current squad here. At Volsinger, Sebastiano. Bernardi, 22 years old. He joins us on a squad player contract. Truth be told, doesn't have a great deal of potential, so not too sure how long we're going to be keeping hold of him, but he's a good squad option for us at the moment, and he's recently spent some time at Atalanta. And then we added a few more options up front. First up, another Frenchman, Christian Coffey, three and a half star current ability, four star potential, so very similar to some other players that we've picked up in that area, can play on either wing, probably doesn't have the finishing to be a striker, even though he can play there, another player on an amateur squad player contract, and another player who we have bought in from Fiorentina. Another option up front for us off the back of that, another Frenchman as well with two under 21 caps and one under 21 goal. This is Wilson Isidore, as I said, very similar to some of the other players that were bought in in this most recent lot. 
since yesterday's episode and he joins us having recently spent time at Monaco. And to round off these transfers, this is one for the future can play centre-back and right-back. Can the 17-year-old Spaniard Adli Galido, this is a player much like the player that we signed in yesterday's episode, and Benjamin, who hopefully by the time he gets ready for first team, although he's pretty close already, he will be trained at club and that could be quite useful for the UEFA competitions. Freestar current ability has the potential. I think he's more suited to playing right back than centre back as his heading, jumping reach, height isn't that great, but could be a good right back for us in the future. And he joins us having spent a little bit of time at a lower division team in Spain in San Felix. So that could be a quite good pickup for the future for us there in Adli Goledo. So just adding a bit more quality to this team, especially for the start of the league season next season when these players can be introduced to the European side of things for next year, as long as we do qualify. But as well as that, they can finish off the league season here while our current first 11 do continue the job in Europe. So those are the seven signings that we have made since yesterday's episode. Our team going into this first leg away at Oinoia in Cyprus is pretty much from memory the exact same team that we put out in yesterday's episode. No changes at all. Mafio is still our starting right back at the moment over Bamba while he gets sealed in to this team, but it is the team that we have been using for most of this season. Everyone very familiar with each other, as you'll be able to tell by all these nice green lines. We'll try and keep those going through the conference league. That is the benefit of having this team in this competition. So hopefully we can try and upset the apple cart here a little bit. Anything from here on out is a bit of a bonus. We've already exceeded the board's objectives and also any further money that we do get if we can progress is going to really help out our financial balance already been helped out quite a bit through the £80,000 or whatever it was around that mark that we got from yesterday's episode. If we're able to win a few more games, we'll be able to get a decent bank balance up and that could be what we need to try and go professional at the end of this season. But Omanoia from Cyprus in a non-playable league, so not really much point showing you guys what these guys look like. And we'll come back shortly for the first leg in the searing heat in Cyprus as well. Be interesting to see how the boys react to this and see if we can get a decent result to bring home for the second leg. And we've got a very early highlight in this game, a first minute corner. We are in the white today, Omanoia in the green at home, and we do win the ball back from that corner. Boscolo, Shio, what a hit that is. That is a dream start for us away from home in the second qualifying round of the Conference League, and that is how you shock the team who's expected to make their way through like they did in our Tottenham save in the beta. They were a team we took on in the group stage, so I was expecting them to be quite tough. That is a wonderful strike from outside the box there, though, from Boscolo Shio. And after one minute, it is Volsunga nil, Omanoia nil, and we'll see if we can make it a double at very short order as we've a front here as we approach the three-minute mark. Ledson just keeps position there. Out to Diaz, Ledson back in for Stefanson. He puts the ball over there. For Dordovic, we keep it nicely. Sviderski back out to Dordovic. Can he find someone in the middle of the box? Mafio, what can he do? Puts the ball in. Sviderski back for Boscolo. She is going to try another one, and it comes off the upright. Good chance, bit of a silly foul there from Dordovic, but Boscolo Shio in good form early. 1-0 up after six minutes. 43 minutes gone now, so a good cool-down period since that hot start from us, and in particular, Boscolo Shio. And we are dominating things very similar to the first game of yesterday's episode. Hopefully, we get a bit more reward than we did in that game because that nearly proved costly. Luckily, we got a good away result this time. It looks like it might be going the other way, playing quite well away from home. We were on the attack, but Omanoia did deal with the ball into the box, and they now look to play out from the back, long to his teammate, and they now look to play out down the left-hand side, and they are doing some good short passing here. If we can go into halftime, in this away leg with a 1-0 lead though, we would take that because that would be a good result heading into the home leg. But they are now inside our final third. Lac Jacques makes his way down the left-hand side out to Kasulus. And he plays the ball back into the centre. Can the Cypriot outfit do anything of note here? It's a good slide tackle there from Boscolo. Shio referee. That was clean as a whistle and he's given the penalty. Might be getting paid off by the Cypriot government there, looking at that, but let Jacques with the penalty, and there's a bit of justice, it is straight at Badu, so no harm done, it looked like a very good challenge that from Boscolo Shio, luckily a bad refereeing decision 
does not cost us right before half time. It does slightly skew the way that first half was playing out XG wise because we were looking quite dominant up until that penalty. A good save there from Baru, albeit straight at him, so didn't have to do a great deal. But we go into half time with a well deserved 1 0 lead, it feels like. Leandro Diaz is down to a 6.4 rating, but I just think we'll hold off at the moment. I think we're looking quite good in this game. We'll see what happens throughout the second half, but pretty happy with how things are going. A little bit of a late scare through that dodgy penalty, but we hold a 1-0 lead at halftime in the first league away from home. Five minutes into the second half, it is a free kick here to Omanoia. They play it short, much like they did in the late highlight of that first half, where they won that pretty dodgy penalty. Luckily, though, Baru made the pretty safe save, and there was no harm done from it, but we hold the 1-0 lead, and as I said at halftime, feel like that's pretty well deserved when you consider the stats and how we've looked in this game for the most part, or at least in those first couple of highlights that we were shown. But they are holding the ball quite nicely when they are in position here. Uh, Omanoya, Shehu, just keeps that, plays it back to a teammate, and they look to expose us down the right-hand side. Play a ball into the centre. Good tackle there from Shaw, and we do get position back. Can we do something on the counter-attack? Leads on over to Dordovic on a yellow card. Makes his way towards the byline. Can he put a ball? Into the mix of far post, he picks out Leeds on our two wingers combined. And that's exactly how we want to start the second half, much like the first. We now hold a 2-0 lead away from home. This would be a massive result and could be a rather nice payday for the club, both from this round and, of course, the next round of these Conference League qualifiers. That would be a nice £170,000 or so if we got through this. But that's a good goal, Dordovic, back out to Leeds on. Heads it away and we are 2-0 up early in the second half. 60 minutes gone here in time for us to make our first bunch of substitutions. Dordovic down to a red hat and on a yellow card. So Mamaj can come on for him. And Zvidurski also down to a red hat as well. So Musumiki can come on for him. But still pretty happy with how this is going. 2-0 up with a half hour left. And shortly off the back of those substitutions, we have a corner lead. Some puts this into the mixer and Kurt Shaw, who got the tackle. And that got us possession back for that previous goal. Gets his head right on the end of that. Just kisses the underneath of the crossbar. Finds its way in the back of the net. And this is looking very nice for us now. 3-0 up with a half hour to go. And it already might look like we might have this tie potentially wrapped up early. And shortly off the back of that goal, Ledson is down to a red heart. Had a good game, a goal and an assist. But Paprasiki can come on for him. That's all our subs used. 3-0 up with 25 minutes left to play. Up to the 71 minute mark now, we have yet another corner. Mamaj picks out Shaw, it comes off the upright. Another good chance from a near post corner, but it remains 3-0. And shortly off the back of that most recent chance to Shaw, we have a free kick here, which the goalkeeper takes shorter, much like Omanoya have done throughout this game. We do look to play out from the back, but this has been a bit of an improvement from our efforts yesterday. There's a lovely ball from Musa Meshi. Can he put it past the goalkeeper? Just about does too. It comes off the upright about as good as he could have done from that angle. A little bit less weight on that ball. And I think that would have been perfect. But we cut them open nicely there. Good chance. But unfortunately, can't quite take it in that moment. But it does remain 3-0 inside the last 10 minutes. We will get the boys to time waste a little bit. But as I was saying, it has been an improved performance in front of goal compared to yesterday taking our chances a bit better than we were in that home league against Bohemian, there's a nice ball for Mamaj, puts it in far post, and Papraziki, they are onside, and we are finishing this game, in great touch, this has been a very good performance, away from home, and 4-0, surely, that's the tie wrapped up now, only after the first leg, especially, with the second one, being at home, good short passing, Mamaj is given an absolute ton of space, Papraziki gets inside, his man just hits that across the face, of the goalkeeper, not much he can do, and it looks like we'll be going, into the home league with a very nice 4 0 lead. And really, it would take a pretty big bowl job for us to blow it from here. That is a superb performance from pretty much everyone in the squad. The only concerning moment really was that penalty that they got late in the first half, which was a little bit dodgy anyway, it has to be said. Luckily, though, he hit it straight at Baru and we rebounded nicely with three goals in the second half. And that is a very nice performance. We take a 4 0 lead into the second leg back in Iceland and we will come back shortly for that second leg and hopefully, as long as we don't bottle it, we'll be making our way through to the third qualifying round of the Conference League. And first highlight of the second leg comes at the 24 minute mark. We've put out 
exactly the same team as we did in the first leg as we have this game. In Reykjavik, the boys should be a little bit more familiar with the temperature here, but they were on absolute fire in Cyprus, where the boys there, and Dordovic now makes his way down the right-hand side, keeps possession nicely, unleashes a shot, somehow that gets through the goalkeeper, what an individual goal, that is from Dordovic, it was a little bit sloppy at the end from their goalkeeper, but before that he did a ton of work from there, the halfway line just jogs his way through and around, the Omanoya defence unleashes a shot. Yeah, goalkeeper should probably be doing better there, it's fair to say, but that's probably going to be in discussion for goal of the season. 5-0 up on aggregate now after a half hour in the second leg. 41 minutes gone now. We have our second highlight of the second leg, looking very comfortable. 5-0 up on aggregate. Header there from Ledson. Forces a save. It falls back out to him. Puts it right into the centre of the inner box. And Stefansson is there to pick up. Yet another goal this season. I think that came up as 13th of the season so far. And we are absolutely thrashing Omanoya. It was a header. It came off the post or Fabiano's hand. Not too sure exactly. But Ledson's there to put it straight back into the mixer. And we're going to go, hopefully, into halftime with a very comfortable 2-0 lead on the day. 6-0 on aggregate. We are absolutely making the Cypriot outfit look very second rate at the moment. So that looks good. We can probably afford to rest a few players as we do enter the second half of this game, and we will look to do that, take off some of our key players who we could save for upcoming league games before we do head into the third qualifying round. Is it 6-0 up? You'd expect us to be making our way through to that. Touch wood, but it would take an almighty bottle job if that was not to be the case. So what we'll do is we will take off a slightly tired leads on for Pup Riziki to start the second half. He's the most tired player out there, but very happy with how this is going. 6-0 up on aggregate as we enter the last 45 minutes of this tie. And we actually have an immediate highlight from the kickoff there. Double change for Omanori as they look to do something in this tie. They have been pretty poor, it has to be said. We have been absolutely lethal in front of goal. A big improvement from that game against Bohemian yesterday. So we are looking quite nice. And Lilimosa plays that forward to prep Riziki as we look to make a great start here to the second half Stefans on with the header just over the bar and it does remain 6-0 on aggregate. 56 minutes gone and it is Omanoya in possession. They play a ball out to our left hand side. Diaz nearly gets an interception but unfortunately the ball does end up in possession of the separate outfit. Ball over the top there for Zionis and he just takes things out to the left hand side, puts the ball into the mixer. Very similar to the second goal that we got in today's game, a little bit of a tighter angle there for their striker, I believe that is, to put that away. But for the first time over these two legs, they do get on the score sheet, albeit probably a little bit of a consolation goal at this stage. It's well worked, though, and it is 2-1 on the day to Volsinger, but 6-1 on aggregate. Now up to the 61-minute mark here, we look to get a pretty quick reply. It is Pup Riziki putting a ball in there, trying to find Stefans on, but Fabiano comes out to claim that pretty comfortably, boots this deep. And their striker, who got the most recent goal, does win possession. Long ball over the top there for one of their players. And they make it two all on the day. So Omanoya have come out of the sheds at halftime, fired up. But it's probably not going to be enough, given that they lost the first league 4-0. So nothing to worry about just yet. But a slightly disappointing performance here back at home. I say home, kind of air quotes home, because it is in Reykjavik. Not our proper home stadium due to the capacity limits for the conference league, but not a great start to the second half of the second leg as they have picked things back to all on the day. We'll make a few substitutions here. Boscolo Shio on a 6.5 rating, so Musumiki can come on for him. I think that's all. Pup Riziki, the other player, on a 6.5, but he's just come on the pitch, and hopefully we can at least try and win this game on the day as it's two all as we get towards the last 20 minutes. And up to the 69-minute mark now, a nice time to make our last substitution. For this tie, very comfortable still at 6-2 on aggregate. Dordovic has gone down to a red hard and has actually picked up an orange injury. So hopefully that's not too serious. Mamaj can come on for him. 20 minutes left, looking good for us to make the third qualifying round. And shortly off the back of that substitution, it is a throw-in to Omanoya. A very good second half from them here in the second leg. As I said, a little bit disappointing from us in the home leg, albeit not at our home ground. Maybe that's having an impact, but... It's a little bit too little too late for them. At this stage, they get a header off there just over the bar, and it does remain two all on the day. 
6.2 on aggregate for now, but shortly off the back of that, we might have a highlight here ourselves as we have a thrown, albeit deep inside our own half, but we do make our way into the opposition's part of the field briefly. Lilla Mosa plays it back to Shaw, and hopefully we start to drive forward here. Shaw back out to Diaz. Pat Brzezicki, now we look to make our way forward. We might have to pass this back and does to Sladurski, but good short passing, holding position. Puts the ball over the top there. Forced to France on slide. Tackle falls very kindly there to Nixon Mamaj. That's a little bit of a fortunate goal, truth be told, but we will take it. And that puts us up 3-2 on the day. And that's actually quite important in terms of the Build Nation Challenge because each of these ties, I believe, do count four coefficient points. So if you can win both legs, that is better than just winning the one leg. So this could be quite a good goal for the coefficient. Bit of a fortunate one there. But Mamaj does tuck it away, and it's 3-2 with 10 minutes left on the day, 7-2 on aggregate. And now it is a throw inside the final third for us. Can we make it 4-2? Stefan on with a header, comes off the post. They clear it away, and it does remain that scoreline as we enter the last 10 minutes. And about to enter injury time in the second leg. Very comfortable over both legs, largely thanks to that 4-0 win in the away leg. But we come back home, have to... Somewhat get our act in gear in the second part of that second half after we were 2 0 up at half time. They made it 2 all after about a quarter of an hour throughout that second half, but we get a late goal rather fortunately to Mamaj and win on the day 3 to a much tighter tie than the first league was. But in the end, we make our way through to the third qualifying round. Surprisingly, quite comfortably over the Cyprus side, and we will come back and see how the other Icelandic teams got on in that round and see who we will face in the third qualifying round tomorrow. And looking at the other results from the Conference League off the back of that, pretty comfortable win for us, a little bit surprising, but we will definitely take it. I suppose that's the benefit of playing a team from a non-playable league. I will say that because that is usually how things work out. I found that out in our Hexagon Challenge last year, and it looks like that's carried over into Football Manager this year. So that ended up being quite a kind draw to us there, taking on the Cypriot side. But looking at the other results, half Naf Shador, did lose their second leg 2-0 against an Austrian side, but luckily picked up a 3-0 win in the first leg. So they make their way through to the third qualifying round as well. And if we make our way down just a little bit further, I'm not too sure how they've actually found themselves in the conference league because I wasn't expecting Breda Blick to be in this league. I thought they would be going up to the Champions League as champions, but it turns out they're actually in the conference league as well. Luckily, they picked up a very comfortable win, much like us over both legs, 4-0 with two 2-0 wins, and they will also be making their way through to the third qualifying round, albeit they are going to be in the champions path side of the draw. So good results for the three teams that were left in the conference league at this stage, and that does bode well. Potentially, we could this year get a Icelandic team into the group stages of a European competition. And in terms of who we will be playing in the next episode, it is going to be Lekia Gdansk, I believe that's how you say that Polish team's name. That is our opposition. They currently find themselves 14th in the Polish league. I won't bother trying to pronounce that name because I'm going to make an absolute hash of it. But it is quite a strong league. And truth be told, they've only actually played one game. So we'll have a look at the season preview just to see exactly where these guys do stack up in terms of Poland. And they are predicted to finish third. So they are. Quite a good team, so that's going to be our toughest test so far in the Conference League, but we look very good there against Omanoia. Obviously, a team in a playable league is going to be a little bit more difficult in the next episode, but hopefully we can carry on our form and maybe sneak our way a little bit closer to the group stages and also help out the finances here at the club. If we go have a quick look at that, you can see for the first time in quite a while, we have a positive bank balance and quite a nice one as well of near £56,000. We're already guaranteed £85,000 from getting to that third qualifying round as well. So that's going to boost us up around the £140,000 mark, and that's going to be the biggest balance that we've had here at the club since I joined, I believe. So this conference league run is doing the club a world of good. Just before we do wrap up today's episode, though, we did actually play a league game in between those two games in today's episode. Quite an important game too, it was actually against Valorakiewicz, but it ended up being a nil all draw. We had to rotate the team a little bit, we kept some players in there where we could. It was mostly though kind of the friendly team, backup team that we put out, and they actually did a pretty good job to hold on 
for a nil all draw in this game. You can see stats wise, we did get dominated somewhat, but just with the players who were registered for the conference league, we needed to put out some different players. So those guys did remain fresh and they did okay for us, it has to be said. Not the greatest performance, but we do pick up a point against the team right up there in terms of the league tables at the end of today's episode. Back to back draws our league form. Just starting to fade away a little bit. Hopefully it picks up soon. We've got Breda Blick straight off the back of that. So that is quite a big game before we do get into Lekia Gdansk in the next episode. But we do hold top spot in the league over Valerakiewicz. Still by five points and with a game in hand as well. So still looking pretty comfortable as we enter the second part of the league season in the Islands Deald in the 81 ranked competition in Europe at the moment. So the Polish league, a long way above us. So that is definitely going to be a tough test for us in the next episode. But that will do it for today. A good win over Omanoia over both leagues. Quite comfortable as well. And we'll see how much longer this European run can continue. And if we can sneak our way into the group stage somehow with the semi-professional team. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already, and have enjoyed the series here on the channel. Also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. As I said, I'm going to try and get videos out over the weekend to make up for yesterday. I'll let you know in the comments if things don't go to plan, but there should be a steady stream of videos at the usual time over this weekend, at least until we do head into Christmas, where there'll probably be a break for a few days, maybe even a week or so, just because I won't be able to film while everyone's around for Christmas time, but we'll do our best. We'll definitely try and make up for it for this upcoming weekend. But until the next time I see you for that third qualifying round, Conference League game against Poland's Lekia Gdansk, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.